Hello there, welcome back to the new video. So today in this video, we'll be talking about this paper, which is titled as Health Prompt, a zero-shot learning paradigm for clinical natural language processing. This is from researchers from FAMIA and University of Pittsburgh. So let's start with the abstract. Deep learning algorithms are dependent on the availability of large-scale annotated clinical text datasets. The lack of such publicly available datasets is the biggest bottleneck for the development of clinical natural language processing systems. Okay, so the paper is trying to propose a zero-shot learning technique in the domain of clinical NLP where it's really hard to find annotated datasets readily available for which even if you are ready to get this annotated, it's going to cost you a lot of time and money. So the question is, can we even model some of the problems such as text classification, entity recognition, all of these in a zero-shot setting when we are talking about clinical text and for which they apply the paradigm of prompt-based learning where the idea is that you use a pre-trained language model that's trained in a self-supervised fashion on a lot of data that's available for that domain so that it learns the vocabulary, structure and the pattern to how the text is usually written in that domain. Once that is done, now if you want to apply that model, let's say M to a certain task of let's say text classification, you will take your text sample, let's say X and pass it through a function F that will convert this into X dash which is augmented by a certain prompt. This could be, the food of this place is really good, full stop, I really dash it. So this is one way in which you can frame your X by augmenting the certain words that could trigger the possibility of giving out sentiment at this mass position. So yeah, with that summary to what we are going to talk about, let's move forward and see the approach to how did the author go about doing it. So this again is the tabular representation of prompt based learning process wherein let's say if you have this as the input call it as bracketed text you would pass it through a prompt function that will convert this into this format wherein you have the text segment this is a symptom of z is something that the model has to predict followed by a couple of more words. So this is what it looks like and finally the model would predict lung, asthma, respiratory all of this at the position of the Z. Okay. So author in this paper try out various pre-trained language models such as BERT, Roberta, BioBERT, Clinical BERT, GPT-2 and T5. So where we already know what BERT is, it's a transformer based encoder model. It was trained in mass language modeling and next sequence prediction for the pre-training phase. Roberta is a little modification to how BERT works. It basically adds on more epochs, discounts the next sentence prediction task, and so on and so forth. BioBERT is nothing but BERT trained on biomedical text. Clinical BERT is trained on electronic health record documents, which is let's say prescriptions, discharge summaries, and so on and so forth. So this is the exact domain what we're talking about in this paper. Where further, GPT-2 is a generative model that takes in a text till a certain position and then tries to predict whatever has to be followed on seeing this prefix. Then T5, which is one of the latest PLMs released by Google. This is a sequence to sequence architecture unlike all the above ones to what we have seen. And it's a unified model that learns one model for modeling a couple of tasks such as text classification, regression, summarization, and all of that. So I have a detailed paper summary around t5 model i'll link to that in the i button make sure to check it out okay so you start with the ehr document and all the methods or the plms that we have seen are not readily available to deal with really long text documents whereas ehr documents are roughly 8000 words long so instead of training a model on such large text document which would put limitations at multiple level of high compute time, high resources would be required and all of that. So what they do is they break this 8000 into certain chunks of let's say 1000 words long. So this is number what I'm just saying for the explanation purpose. So this would become eight chunks of 1000 words long. Now easily you can go about applying certain pre-trained models that are good enough and have been already trained on looking at 1000 word long text. Once those segments are done, you define the labels that you want the text to be classified into. 
and let's call that list as L. You load your pre-trained language model, you've defined the template. So in this case, they are majorly focusing on text classification. So they would kind of model this problem in such a way that the prediction that the PLM is going to make sounds more deterministic. And once you apply PLM and do the inference on each of these chunk of documents, the next step is to aggregate the labels generated for each of these chunks and give the final label for this 8000 word long document. Okay, so yeah, they have a detailed figure on this as well. Yeah, so let's say this is the EHR document to what you had. After applying the encoder, you sequentially concatenate, let's say, two two paragraphs each, and this is what the chunks look like. Then you have a PLM layer that does a prediction and assigns label to each of these chunks, to which you apply chunk pooler to get a final representation for the original EHR document. Now in this, after getting one label per chunk, you can think of multiple ways to how you would want to pool these labels. So others in this paper try max pooling where they pick in the label that has the maximum label and that's what you assign over here. Although you can go about doing average pooling where you average the representation of each of these labels and get one single representation to which you do a k nearest neighbor in the label space and the nearest one is what you assign over here. Or you can sophisticate the system further in terms of adding these in sequence and training LSTM in terms of saying what the classification for this sequence of labels could be and that's what you assign over here so yeah depending on the feasibility and the data that you have you can play around and do this trade-off okay so now talking about the template designing part authors try out two versions which is prefix prompt and close a prompt but the idea of close a prompt is kind of predicting the fill in the blanks in a given text so for example, if this is the original text you had, you apply a colon. A colon is not necessary, but it's again a part of how you'd want to design or the template that works really good for your task. You put in the mask token that has to be predicted by the system, followed by a couple of more words to give in more context to the model. So, so for the text, uh, I believe the text is, just a second, where's the text? I can't find it, where is it? <laughs> okay yeah so the text is yeah you can think of something that has to be classified right and the idea is to classify it in a disease which looks like so dash disorder so this has to be what the system has to predict or you can go about saying text colon dash type of a disease so yeah this could be like closing prompts and the models that you can apply over here are like bird roberta t5 clinical bird bio bird and all of this stuff because if you see the pre-training phase of all these models the basis lies in the way the close prompt works and i'm talking about the prefix prompt so here you'll always kind of find the mask label to be the last thing that you have to predict so it looks like auto regressive modeling kind of thing so gpt or you can also try t5 over here because it has a notion of defining prefix for every task so in this how you would go about doing typically is you define the text disease colon something text this effects dash so something around this now here if you see right the mask is not necessarily going to give you the label as such it will give you the words that might allow you to infer what the actual label could be so for example if it says if you don't drink enough water this affects let's say the actual label was health but the model says skin hair gut system all of this is what let's say the model is predicting now eventually you'll have to have a system in place that maps all of this to saying okay we're talking about health over here so that's again the last step which is verbalizer that kind of models the probability distribution or words to the label set for which again you can have a dictionary mapped already or you can have a k nearest neighbor kind of a system where you map the label set as well as all the words in the same hyperspace and based on what prediction was made you can find a central representation and then the nearest neighbor of the label that's present in that space and that is what you would want to assign probably and yeah this is one of the ways to how you can do it i'll try to link a paper in the description that talks about more around this thing so yeah I believe we are done with the paper and the idea of the paper was pretty clear and simple and talking about the results 
testing multiple templates which we just saw for the task of text classification where we have a text we want to classify that into what disease are we talking about we can see clinical bird outperforms for each of these templates to what we had that's pretty predictable because clinical bird was already trained on a lot of textual data the doctor reports discharge summaries and so on and so forth unlike all the other models that were mostly trained on some pretty generic text apart from biobird that was trained on biomedical text so if we discard the performance of clinical bird after that the best performing model is something biobird i believe which again because it has a closer intersection to clinical domain compared to models that were trained on wikipedia okay cool so i believe we are done with this paper so if you like this content make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel also share it across with your friends to whoso is interested in such content i'll meet you in the next one bye bye and take care